and they're like, I think I can't. This requires a system. <laughs> If you're new to my channel, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos, and hit the thumbs up button so that way YouTube knows that this is a good video. Hey guys, welcome to Texas Beard Adventures. I'm B1, your host, and today I'm going to be talking about the seven tips to bow hunting. First things first, you're going to want to make sure that you have the, the proper licensing for doing whatever hunting or fishing you're wanting to do. So. I'll put a link uh, somewhere here or down below uh, for my dove hunting video that I just put out a couple weeks ago. You go check that out and I talk about the licensing over there and you can find out about dove hunting too. Tip number two, practice, practice, practice. If you can't shoot well, then all the rest of the stuff about bow hunting doesn't even matter if you're not going to be able to hit the animal. so. You need to practice, you need to get familiar with your bow, and um, aim small, miss small. So you wanna, when you practice, you wanna aim for the smallest group that you can, and that way, when you're out in the field, it's a piece of cake. Shoot your broadheads a week or two before you go out in the field, because that way you can get used to how they shoot compared to your practice arrows uh, or your practice tips on your arrows. This is my bow, it's a PSE, I've had it for years. Um, it's a good bow. You can go to your local bow shop and they'll get you set up for what you need for left-handed, right-handed. Make sure you get your yardage pins set up for what you think you're gonna be hunting at your stand. So that way you get familiar with that when you're practicing also. These are not lighted knocks, but I do recommend lighted knocks, they sure help to see the arrow as it's traveling through the air, to see where it's gonna hit the animal uh, at, at impact. Tip number three, get a rangefinder. I personally have a pair of rangefinding binoculars. That's kind of the extreme. You don't need to go that, that expensive. You can get a rangefinder for a couple hundred bucks. Now, it's not gonna be the best out on the market, but if you're just a beginner, it works. You need to know how far you're shooting when your animal comes out because that is key to hitting with a, a bow and arrow. Uh, just like I was talking about earlier with the pins, you have to make sure you got a 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. The new bows that they're coming out with now, they can go up to 100 yards. Um, I don't shoot that far personally, but I know a lot of guys that do. Follow through on your shot. Don't pull back and release and then as soon as you release, go like this, because that movement is gonna affect the arrow as it's traveling and exiting the bow. When I was first starting out on bow hunting, I was at the range and there was this lady watching me and I kept, I was aiming for the bullseye, but every time I would release my trigger, I would go like that. I wasn't moving my hands, but I was moving my head and that was just enough for me to to pull left or pull right. And I was starting to get really frustrated and she pulled me to the side and she says, you know, I know what you're doing wrong. Please tell me because I'm getting ready to just walk out of here. I'm so frustrated. And she says, you need to follow through on your shot. You're not following through. And as soon as I corrected that, it was like, boom, boom, boom. Bullseye after bullseye. Also, when you're aiming at an animal, whether it be a pig, a deer, whatever, you wanna aim for where you want the arrow to exit the body of the animal. So you wanna make sure that you're always hitting a vital lung, heart. And so if they're quartered to you or quartered away, that all that plays into factor. So make sure you know where the arrow is exiting and not just the entrance. It, it may, you gotta make sure that you hit one of those vitals because they could be broadside and you really want a quartering away from you so that way you can get right into the to here and go in and hit those vitals where it counts because they're gonna they're gonna need to bleed to death. It's not like a gunshot or a rifle wound 
where the impact is going to really put a lot of hurting on them. You have to hit those vitals or else they may not die. Tip number four. Oh, this one is super important. Make sure you hunt downwind of your feeder or the trail that you're hunting, or whatever that is, because the wind could change from day to day. It could change even in a day. It could normally be coming at your face. Then all of a sudden you get this front blow in and all of a sudden it's at your back. And you have to make sure that they cannot smell you because they're gonna smell you way before they see you. So that is very, very important. Make sure you know which way the wind is coming from and you gotta hunt downwind of the area that you're targeting. Tip number five, camouflage, camouflage, camouflage. You could even go to the extreme of getting a ghillie suit because that you're gonna get up close and personal with these deer within 20, 30, 40 yards. And you, my cat's hawking up a fur ball over there, sorry. You gotta make sure that they cannot see you. That's why I got my camouflage on my face. If you're in a ground blind, you need to make sure that you wear uh, long sleeves, dark, so that way you don't have, uh, if you have light skin, you don't pop in the blind. It's very important because they can see really good. They can smell even better, but they can see really good. And um, if you're buck hunting and you got this doe coming in, she can snort you out and there goes your buck. So gotta make sure you have good camo on. Um, like I said, maybe get you a ghillie suit. Tip number six, get a backpack to put all your, your incidentals. Uh, um, if you don't want to carry a knife on you, put a knife in the backpack, water, jerky, some deer jerky. So that way you can eat out, out in the field and you're not, you know, famished. And cause you may have to track this animal after you shoot it. So you got to make sure you got plenty of energy. I always take some luxury wipes with me because you never know when mother nature may call and you got to go have a movement. Um, it's, it happens to a lot of us. It's, I know it's funny to think about it, but it, it can happen. And you got to make sure that you're not trying to use a leaf or some bark off a tree. So make sure you're prepared, have some toilet paper or luxury wipes, maybe even a face mask, for, but you know, that goes back into the camo. Make sure you're prepared out in the field. If you want to wear gloves, when you have to field dress the, the animal, you can put those in there. Um, if you're, if you've got to hike the animal out, you can have the meat sacks for that stuff to go in, to be able to take it, you know, uh, through the back country, back it to where you're camping at, or if you're got to make it to the truck, you can do that too. Tip number seven, and this is the last one. Let somebody know when you're going out into the field, where you're going, what area you're going. If you have a blind that they know about, tell them the name of the blind, uh, take your cell phone with you. Uh, tell them when you're going to be back to camp or to the house or whatever, because things can go bad in a split second and you want to be able to have people know where you are so they can find you in case they need to. And most importantly, guys, have fun, be safe and good luck out there. And I hope you bag something really nice. If you enjoyed my video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Comment below if you want to see something else. I'll be glad to make some other videos. Maybe it's some stuff that I haven't thought about and I'm, I'm more than happy to take suggestions from y'all. So, and I'll catch you on the flip side. You dang hillbillies. How many vices do you have? Half a dozen, probably. <laughs> Good shit. Oh. Way to go, Fred. Fourth and beer. Patrick. Ain't sitting too good. Stop <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> chicken! My chicken got loose. Hey, have you seen my chicken? 10% really got me going. Is that it? DNR? Alright, cook those two. What does that mean?
Salt, pepper, garlic. Nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative and it gets the people going. Ow! Oh, pretty bird. Pretty bird. I'm going to eat you with jalapeno in the middle and wrapped with bacon. Oh, pretty bird.